An average person spends about six months of their life waiting in queues. As time has gone on, this wait has become a little less taxing on all of us. Most of us have the luxury of connecting to a million people all around the world, or in my case five, while waiting for our avocado sandwiches. As we transition into the possible pinnacle of technology enhanced living, we forget how much machines really help us and connect us. On the surface, it seems ridiculous, right? Like, why would I ever like to think of a tool, which is basically just a bunch of ones and zeros anyways, helping me live better? Like, that, that, make, that makes no sense. That's outrageous. Almost as outrageous as talking to the person in front of me in the queue. Now that I've mentioned that our devices have become the equivalent of social interaction, it begs the question, do we need to treat our devices the same way that we used to treat people around us? I mean, they did replace the person in front of me or behind me. I don't talk to them anymore. I use my phone to talk to someone else. So is my phone equal to the people around me? Now, I mean, before you guys ridicule me for being brainwashed by <laughs> the meme culture that Generation C has spewed, I would just like to remind you guys the number of times a few of us asked Siri what a number divided by zero is to the point where any human would have been so frustrated that they would have just stopped working. Hey, Siri's listening and she's gonna spare me. Just saying. Guys, I'm joking. <laughs> Obviously not. Now, all jokes aside, artificial intelligence is no longer science fiction. It is science. I can implement a simple neural network that can do predictions within a couple hours. In fact, anybody with a bit of coding experience could, just following on instructions online. And then we could use something, a much more advanced technique such as machine learning to make the model even better and predict stuff even faster with a higher accuracy. Now, computers are extremely good at predicting stuff and doing math, as I mentioned, but they fundamentally lack emotion, right? Well, there's something interesting called the Turing test, obviously named after the famous computer scientist Alan Turing, most renowned for his achievements in decoding the Enigma, which was a crucial turning point in World War II. He called it the imitation game, kind of like the Benedict Cumberbatch movie. Wait, actually, exactly like the Benedict Cumberbatch movie if you have ever gotten a chance to see it. So, in the Turing test, a human interacts with two entities, one of which is a system and the other one a human. So, the human interacting with these two entities have no idea which is which and would do this by using, let's say, a chat. If the human interacting with these en two entities cannot tell which one is the machine and which one is the man, then that machine passes the Turing test. It is sort of like if you texted me and I wasn't really there but you got responses and it seemed exactly like me because somebody was able to create a machine that is a better me. So now if a machine was able to mimic exactly a human's actions, does that imply that the machine must have also been able to imitate the human's emotion? Not necessarily. In fact, most machines that pass the Turing test often have neutral conversations with the human administering the test, the human speaking to the machine and the man, and it does not really convey emotion. So this begs the question, where exactly is artificial intelligence heading? When used right, it can be the greatest gift to man since let's say fire. Now obviously, many of you might think that's an over-exaggeration, but if we could handle menial tasks in the least amount of time or even assign menial tasks to another person or another system, we can focus on things that are really important and tasks that require human intelligence with superhuman assistance. One of the other key features that we need to understand about artificial intelligence is its accuracy. If programmed once uh, to do a particular operation, let's say a surgery, a machine can perform 
that surgery with such precision that very few surgeons renowned all around the world could do. Now, while there is a possibility of machine failure, with artificial intelligence and the proper training of certain models, this can be minimized to such an infinitesimally small amount that it wouldn't matter. Now, with all these benefits, you, you have to just wonder, is it wise to stop the development of AI just in the fear of all the cons? It has so many advantages as I just mentioned, and it also has so many risks like I talked about before. So now it comes to the question of the risk and the reward and as a species, how much are we willing to sacrifice to reap the right reward? The consequences of brutal suppression is often dire and history has several reminders that we can look to for guidance. For example, the Dark Ages in all of Europe slowed down the progress of humanity by a great deal. It took the Enlightenment for ideas to freely spread and prosper. Suppressing AI does not seem like the most wisest move, especially after all its advantages and all the problems that we are facing currently. The reasonable solution to propagating ideas such as AI, where the reward is massive but the risk is also massive, would be through prudence and educating people about the whole story. You see, information that is not complete is the most dangerous thing that can be passed upon to society. And many a times, artificial intelligence is reduced to this buzzword, which is basically just used to attract investors and spread ideas that are subpar. I feel like I've seen at least 17 startups from Silicon Valley yesterday alone while browsing through LinkedIn that use artificial intelligence for solving a menial problem. The entire purpose of using advanced algorithms and trying to make a computer think like a human is to solve problems of that magnitude. Not to, sh shop, not to shop for your groceries or, I don't know, do your laundry. Those are tasks that AI can automate, but should that be our main focus when it can do so much more? Now, the question of starting small and then expanding also comes into play where one might argue that first we cover the menial task and then we ask AI to move on. But unfortunately, machines don't work that way. Any task, given the proper instructions and training, can be performed by a machine quite easily. Now this begs the question, why not train it to do the most advanced task first? Again. We need to find a good balance between the relatively simple tasks and the complex operations such as operating on a real life person because the entire point of AI is to perform tasks efficiently and to automate the process in several cases because most of the tasks that AI is expected to perform can be done by a human but obviously taking more time and resources so now, where do we start? <laughs> it's a funny question because I don't know the answer to that. It depends on you. Every person is entitled to his or her own opinion and this is just one of those questions where you cannot start from either end of the spectrum and a fine in between is quite hard to find. However, I am sure of one thing though. If we can look upon all the actions that our predecessors have taken, whenever a new idea comes into play and is tried to suppress, it just radicalizes the idea. Don't we have enough problems to worry about already? Climate change, global warming, that's one of the biggest problems that we face today. What if I told you that a computer can possibly make an impact on such a big problem? Yes, it can. It can calculate how exactly chemicals are re released from, let's say, a factory and how this can be reduced and how it can be controlled while maximizing the output of that factory. Problems like these require innovative solutions and humans, the one thing, believe it or not, we're good at is innovating when we are in crisis. This whole pandemic has been an example of humans stepping up and taking responsibility. Some of us obviously have seen the better parts of it than others, but it just goes to show how far, far we can go if we cooperate as a species. Now, I would like to leave one question in your mind. 
at the beginning I mentioned how treating a mobile 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 phone or like a laptop with the equal respect as a person however ridiculous it seems would you rather have AI to be your friend than your foe and this is not today when all it can do is follow instructions and recognize your voice it is when AI starts actually thinking and possibly feeling